Hello and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be making copper 2 bromide from potassium bromide and copper 2 sulfate. Copper 2 bromide has multiple different uses. Specifically in organic chemistry, it can be used to brominate things. Similar to copper 2 chloride, it can also dissolve aluminum. First, I measured out 10 grams of potassium bromide and 6.7 grams of copper 2 sulfate. I then added water to each beaker, however the amount of water I added turned out to not really be enough to dissolve either, so I had to add much more in the end. To get everything to dissolve in the copper sulfate solution, I ended up stirring it. Once pretty much everything had dissolved in each solution, I then began slowly adding the potassium bromide. The only reason why I added it slowly is because I wanted to see if there would be any big color change right off the bat, however it seemed to be more gradual. Once everything was added, you can clearly see the vivid bluish green color of the copper 2 bromide in solution. The interesting thing about copper bromide is that the color it is when it's a solid is completely different from that when it's in solution. Whenever it's a solid, it's, to me at least, very dark purple to orange color. Wikipedia says it's gray for some reason, but I don't think that's the case. Because of this, you can clearly see where any little splash of the solution went to, which could be useful, I guess. As I let the solution stir for a few minutes, I noticed a precipitate began to form. From what I can tell, this precipitate is likely a mixture of different things between potassium sulfate as a byproduct and unreacted potassium bromide or copper sulfate. Anyway, I let this stir for a bit longer and then I set up for gravity filtration. As I filtered, the dark purple to orange spots all over my table and glassware really started to become evident. Finally, once it was all done filtering, I decided to just bottle it as is. And this is because copper 2 bromide is actually apparently pretty deliquescent, so I really didn't want to have to deal with crystallizing it, and Wikipedia actually has some pretty crazy methods of drying it out all the way with phosphorus pentoxide. From what I can tell, the water and any leftover potassium in solution shouldn't be that big of a deal for any reactions that I might do with this. 